now we are going to talk about energy pie charts. I, energy pie charts are one way to qualitatively represent how much energy is stored in a system. For example, if we're going to start off with, say, a projectile launcher, kind of like what we did when we were using those projectile launchers for horizontally launched projectiles and angled launches, we can use that to launch one straight up. Now we can account for how energy is stored within that system. If we were to push down on the projectile launcher to that first uh, mark where it was a single click, we have compressed the spring and then we can represent the energy that is stored there with a single circle. We can label what type of energy is going to be, but if we're just talking about the amount of energy, one click is going to correspond with this size pie chart. If we were to push it down a little bit more, we are adding more energy. It required more effort from us to push down and cause that ball to be compressed even further on top of that spring. So we needed to transfer more energy into the system, which means that our pie chart is going to be bigger. The energy stored within that system represented with the circle. As more energy is added to that system, the circle gets bigger. And then if we were to compress it all the way, that third click, we have transferred as much energy into that system as we can. So that's going to be the biggest size circle we have. Now that's the energy we transfer in. Unless we add more energy to the system or remove energy out of the system, the amount of energy that the system has is going to remain constant. So the size of that circle is going to remain constant. Once we have set up the size of that circle, we're going to keep it constant so that way energy is going to be conserved. Once we have that size set, then we can start talking about how energy is accounted for at each moment in time. So we're actually going to use this third one, the where it's three clicks, because that's where the energy is stored the most. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be focusing at four different points along the motion of this ball. The pie chart will represent the proportion of energy storage types. Because a pie chart tells you how much or what proportion of the whole you have, 100% of the energy stored within the system at any given point in time must be accounted for. Now, how that energy is stored, or what the energy allows the object to do, it will be changing. For example, at location A, we have that circle that represents the total amount of energy stored within the system. That ball is pressed down onto the spring. If we include the spring, the launcher, and the ball as part of our system, then we can talk about these three energy storage accounts. The kinetic energy is how quickly an object is moving. But right here at point A, the object is not moving, so its energy would not be stored in the kinetic energy account. The gravitational potential energy. That depends on how high up the ball is. So how high up the object is means more and more gravitational potential energy. Right here, I have it at its lowest point. So we're going to assume that's a height of zero at its starting point. That's why we have zero gravitational potential energy stored there. This last one, the elastic energy. How much energy is stored in stretching or compressing the object? Well, this ball is on top of that fully compressed spring. And because we're including the projectile launcher as part of our system, all of the energy that we have stored in the launcher and the ball is just going to be the elastic energy account. Now, at point B, that is the instant that the ball leaves the launcher. At that point, that spring has decompressed. It is now in its relaxed state. So, there's no more elastic energy there. The ball is going to be a little bit higher up, so we're going to have some gravitational potential energy. But really, what we're focusing on, and the way that most of the energy is going to be accounted for, is in motion. The instant the ball leaves the launcher, it is moving really fast upwards. That's why for my energy bar, uh, pie chart up here, almost all of this is accounted for in EK, our kinetic energy, how quickly the ball is moving. And just a little bit is accounted for in EG, how high up the ball is. At point C, it's now, well, definitely cleared the launcher. It's now about halfway up. So. The spring is still completely decompressed, so there's no elastic energy accounted for. The ball is even higher up, so I'm going to have more EG in my next pie chart. And because we know that an object that has vertical motion, it has that force of gravity acting on it. And while it's in the air, that's the only force acting on it. 
which means that we would have that downward acceleration, which would constantly be slowing the ball down on its way up. So that means that while it will still be moving upwards, it won't be moving as quickly, which means that the kinetic energy will be less. We still have 100% of the energy accounted for, but as the ball is slowing as it is rising, the EK, the kinetic energy, is less than it was at B. But because it's also higher up, that's why the EG got bigger. Now, the last point we're going to be focusing on here will be part D, or location D. The ball is at maximum height. That means that the gravitational potential energy is going to be even greater. The spring is still completely in its relaxed state, so there's no elastic energy. But the kinetic energy, this just depends on how we're going to be looking at this. I'm launching this ball straight up. If it is just moving straight up, at its maximum height, its instantaneous velocity there is zero, which means the object is not moving at all. So if it's launched straight up, it doesn't have kinetic, it doesn't have elastic energy. So it's just 100% gravitational potential energy. Now we continue this, uh, more on the ball's path back down where it would be losing EG and that energy gets transferred into the kinetic energy account. Um, that would cause the ball to speed up, 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 up until it's at its lowest point and hits the ground again. Then we can start talking about how energy is transferred there. But right now, if we're just focusing on how energy is stored while it is from point A to point D, a fully compressed projectile launcher with a ball inside, and then the ball getting launched to its maximum height, this is how we can represent what proportion of energy is stored in different accounts. What proportion of that energy is doing what? That's really the benefits of these energy pie charts is all we need to focus on is what proportion of the energy within a system is doing. Is the ball moving? Kinetic energy. Is the ball increasing or decreasing its height? In that case, it's increasing or decreasing its potential energy, uh, gravitational potential energy. Is it stretching or compressing a spring? So if it is, then it's increasing or decreasing its elastic energy. We're not really worried about quantifying it just yet, just focusing on the qualitative representation and proportional reasoning when it comes to the conservation of energy.